So what's up guys, Cool Sam here, doing another sit down video. I know this is probably the most boring videos we got you guys watch on the channel. But I just want to take a little time, I just to talk about fishing in general. A couple, you know, topics I just wanted to discuss a little bit about some stuff I've been seeing recently. First thing I want to talk about is why fishing? Why do I love fishing? Why people love fishing in general? Because a lot of times people who don't fish, they always ask, why you like to fish? How you could fish so much? Fishing real boring. Well, to me, fishing is the most enjoyable activity or the most enjoyable hobby that I do. And it's for a number of reasons. I mean, everyone will have their own reasons why. But for me, fishing is definitely my number one passion. You know, I used to like cricket back in the day when West Indies was a little good. I gave up cricket, now it's only fishing. Now, the first reason I say I like fishing is because of the challenge involved in fishing. You know, fish is not a, a guaranteed thing. You're not guaranteed to catch fish. And every time you go fishing, you encounter different um, obstacles, different scenarios. And you have to try to always adjust to try to catch that fish. And you always learn along the way. So for me, I really enjoy the challenge. Sometimes you go somewhere and you're not catching anything. And you have to switch up baits, switch up gear, switch up line, uh, try different tactics to finally get that fish. So the challenge involved in fishing is definitely something that I enjoy. Of course, the greatest thing that when fishing is actually feeling that fish on the line and fighting that fish. For someone who's never done it before, you can understand why they don't like fishing. But when you actually hook that fish and have a fish on the line, especially a decent sized fish, so when the fish is actually taking drag and taking slack and that line is coming out of your hand, that feeling is makes your adrenaline start pumping. It's definitely one of the best feelings in the world for me. And like anyone who has caught a decent sized fish or even small fish sometimes on light tackle, anyone who's experienced that, I'm sure they can relate. Actually fighting that fish and getting the fish up and actually catching the fish is very enjoyable. The other thing I enjoy about fishing is the actual adventure of going on a fishing expedition. You don't simply just sit down in front of a screen and, and you know, sit down one stationary place and go fishing. You actually have to get into the outdoors. Sometimes you have to go through different terrains, go through some I would say call in Trinidad bush or high grass or go through the mangroves or even take a boat and go out in the ocean. So it's all about the adventure. And if you could do that, you know, with a couple of your, your, your friends, your cousins, your buddies, it's always a lot more enjoyable. As like I said, some of my favorite fishing channels is always involve like a squad. So I mean, it's the adventure about it, getting out there, I mean, going in search of fish, not just catching the fish, but the actual process of going. Maybe in my plan a trip, to go abroad and, and do some fishing or maybe you might go into the, you know try to go into the bush and find a new spot or use google maps and go and research a new spot and find a new spot and try it out it's all about the adventure that's the next really enjoyable part about fishing and of course another part of fishing is you can actually catch something to eat you can actually catch your own food i mean what greater feeling is there than actually going out there and catching something and bringing it home for you and your family to eat i mean i do practice like a lot of catch and release and i do that for specific reasons for specific fish but when you actually get like a nice snapper, or a nice ancho, or a nice salmon, you actually carry it home. If you do cook it yourself, or if you prepare it, you clean it, and then your wife or, or your mom even cooks it for you. And you get that feeling of you caught that fish, and you brought it home, and you're feeding your family with it. It's definitely a very rewarding experience, a rewarding feeling. So again, if you've never done it before, you might not fully understand what I'm saying, but if you actually do it, I'm sure you can attest to the fact that it's, it's a very enjoyable and rewarding experience. I was lucky enough to grow up in a fishing and hunting family, like even from my grandfather, my father, my uncles, everyone was involved in fishing and hunting. So it kind of came naturally for me. Now, someone who didn't grow up in that background, like I said, it mightn't be as natural for you, but I can encourage, that's the purpose of this channel, to encourage everyone, if you've never fished before, to try it. I mean, fishing is easy, fishing is enjoyable, and I tell you, if you get into fishing, you're going to enjoy yourself. You and your family, you and your squad, fishing is definitely one of the most enjoyable sports there is out there, enjoyable hobbies and it's very easy, anyone can do it, from kids to adults to men, women, children, girls, you know, etc. Everybody could fish. Now by me saying everybody could fish, I really mean that. Fishing doesn't have to involve any expensive equipment and go to any expensive places to go, any far trips. You can simply get a bamboo rod with a cork and a worm and catch fish, and that is fishing and it's an enjoyable experience. You could simply go to the boat yard or go to the, to the banks of the river, cast out a line, catch a catfish, I mean, that's why I grew up fishing. Like, I mean, my first experiences of fishing was actually going by the bird sanctuary where they launch the boats and throwing line and catching catfish there. And that was the most enjoyable. Me and like three or four of my cousins used to go, two people in one boat, two people on the next boat, and we used to go competition. Whoever catches the most fish used to win. Now, if you catch a snapper, it was five points. If you catch a snook or a boche, you never used to call it snook, boche, it was three points, and a catfish was just one point. 
and we were head to head competitions and my team was one of course but that was ex we used to look forward to doing that every weekend or every chance we got just going right there and training line and catching these fish so I mean if you have kids or you know get them involved in the sport take them out let them experience it I mean not everyone will like it but I'm sure most people would and like I said anyone can do it and like I said there are many different types of fishing I do a lot of artificial bait fishing or law fishing that's not for everyone I mean some people enjoy it some people don't but like I said you could take a cork line a worm go catch cuscara or catch wabin uh, you could take a boat and go down the islands and drop in 150 feet of water and do banking or you could take a boat and go out in the shallows and do banking some people like trolling I mean that's not my preference like I said not everyone likes all types of fishing I wouldn't prefer I don't you know I never really fancy going there and, and trolling and going after those guys maybe I'll try it one day again and, and see how it goes but like I said everyone has their different choices I mean I prefer to go and just drop a cork line and a drain and catch a cusker up I mean that's just me so at least if you've never done it before try it if you had a bad experience once before I mean don't put too much pressure on yourself just try it and try to have fun doing it every hobby every sport is all about fun and enjoyment so never make it anything more than that like I said fishing should be about fun if you're now getting into fishing um, never be discouraged if you don't catch that big fish or those fish right away the only way for you to catch more fish or to be better at fishing is to fish more literally the more you fish the more fish you catch the bigger fish you'll catch not because only because you spend more time on the water but because you learn fishing more it's only recently I learned that how University of the West Indies offers a degree in fishing. So I just want to take a look at it and see what's the prerequisites involved to get signed up for the program. So let's go into this right now on UE site, University of the West Indies. Well, actually, I've not seen any fishing degrees available here. But the funny thing is, some people talk like they have degrees in fishing, they comment on how people catch fish how they fight the fish, what the names people call fish. I mean, so what if you, you call a fish a certain name that you grew up calling it? I mean, you never knew better. So for example, some people call uh, lane snapper redfish. No big thing in that, everyone knows it's a redfish. Or some people call tapon granticae. If that is where you learned when you were growing up, I mean, no, no big thing in that. That is just what, the, what your parents or grandparents would have taught you. I mean, no one is saying to stay like that forever. I mean, you continue to learn and develop yourself in the sport. But again, don't I want to discourage you. Um, a lot of times in Trinidad, we have this dispute about catching and keeping tarpon. I mean, yeah, tarpon is a big fish. When people catch it, they always like to keep it and show pictures of it. But throughout the world, it's widely encouraged to catch and release tarpon because it's a much better game fish. And the sport of fishing benefits when you release the tarpon. Now, I agree to that. But again, sometimes you see in Trinidad, people saying, when they see someone post up a tarpon, release the tarpon is better for the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, I don't know where they got that information from, but it's not about the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, if you catch a big tap on and you keep it and you sell it, whatever the case may be, that might be a benefit to you and the people who are buying it. Now, if you release it, it will be a benefit for a different group of people. So it's all about what we call the cycle of money or the cycle of, of goods and services. Uh, that's how it affects the economy. It's not necessarily you catch a fish and release it, it's going to benefit the economy through tourism. So that's not the argument for it. The argument is tarpon is a slow growing fish. And when you catch and kill an adult sized tarpon, that eliminates a huge number of offspring from that tarpon. Simply, and it takes that long, it takes really long for that tarpon to get that size. So that's what I would encourage any recreational fisherman. If you catch a tarpon, you should release it simply because it will benefit the fishery and benefit the fish itself. I mean, for someone who's catching and selling fish, I can't knock you for you know, doing your, your, your job and providing for your family. Again, if you can catch and target other species of fish, it will be best. But again, if you can only catch it up one and sell it for X amount to, to make X amount to spend behind your family and make a living, I'm not gonna knock you for that. Again, again I'd like to encourage catch and release of tap one, especially all juveniles, make sure you release it. And like I said, any recreational fisherman watching this should be releasing tap one. That's something else we should, we should like to encourage in Trinidad is catch and release. I mean, small fish makes no sense keeping some small fish. I mean, it's not going to benefit you in any way. It's just going to, you know, that, uh, be a more detriment to the fishery. So practice catch and release anytime you could. Specifically for some, some species, like I'd say snook, tapon, even snapper. Um, any small or juvenile fish should be released. Give them a chance to grow. It's the only way that we could sustain the fishery for the future. So like I said, if you want to catch more fish or become better at fishing, you just have to fish more. Fish boats spend more time in the water, learn more about fishing. The only other way for you to learn more if you're not actually fishing is, well, to watch fishing videos. 
So if you're watching this video, you might be learning something. I mean, you can watch all the other videos I had. I don't, whatever I know, whatever small little knowledge I have, I try to show it in the videos, as well as many other YouTubers out there. Other videos, you can take a look at it and you learn more about fishing. For the, this video, at the end of this video, I just want to show you the three basic rigs that we use, um, basically for any type of fishing. It's the simplest form of, of, of fishing, the simplest rigs that we use. I mean, there are many variations to it. So I'm just going to show you the basic breakdown of these. I mean, if you want me to go in a more in-depth or detailed video of it in the future, you can let me know. But I just want to show you the, the three basic setups. So the first rig I'm going to show you is, is the most basic of all. We use it for almost any types of fishing, beach fishing, banking from the boat, um, down the islands. And that's what we call the banking rig or the high-low rig. For this rig, you can see it's a basic, quite a basic setup. This is the main line going down to the weight. Along the main line, there are two loops. Or you could put three, four, some people put five, you know, make it a mini palang. But basically, I use two. A lot of the videos you'll see me banking down your lines, that's what I use. So I would use one loop, one loop, and then I'd make another loop and use the sinker that you can thread through the loop. We call it the teardrop sinker. Well, we have other names for it, but I wouldn't say it on YouTube. But basically, the sinker is to the bottom with two hooks suspended and two loops above. Like I said, this is the basic rig that you can use for banking down the islands. Use it, if you're fishing with this down the islands, usually use like a 16 ounce weight. And I recommend like a two number seven J hooks. If you want to go slightly smaller, no problem. But that's what we usually use and we usually catch in rakandos and snappers with. So down the islands is that. If you're going in shallow, shallows in the Gulf, uh, you could cut down the weight size definitely maybe two or three ounces. And the hook size could go to like a number 10 J hook. And that's the basic banking line or high-low rig. Now the next rig I'm going to show you is what we call the running line setup or the Carolina rig is also known as. For this rig, you'll see this the main line, there's a swivel and then we go down to the hook. Usually this length of line from the swivel to the hook, usually like a, a, a foot and a half, two feet, sometimes three feet, this can vary. You can adjust to see which one works best for you. But basically, the main line comes to the swivel and then from the swivel to the hook is the leader. On top of the swivel, there's a, a circle weight or egg sinker that allows to run freely for the rest of the line. This is the, the sinker here, swivel, and then straight down we go to the hook. Again, this is a usually useful rig or it's a, it's a preferred rig. Like if you're, using, if you're going after snapper, they usually attack this rig or take this rig better than the banking rig. Um, again, you can vary the size of the sinker and the size of the hook depending on where you're fishing. I usually use maybe down the lines if, it, if it's allowed me. I use like a, a four ounce or a six ounce egg sinker and like a number seven hook. In the shallows of the Gulf, you could cut down because the snapper like light line. So maybe use a one ounce and maybe a, a number 10 or 11 J hook and you usually get the snappers with those. So it's the main line, sinker, then the swivel, leader, and then the hook. Finally is my go-to rig these days I use a lot. Um, that is the knocker rig. For this rig, if you're using braid or monofilament and you want to attach a different a diameter leader, a different weight leader, I usually attach with a double uni. I mean, that is not I use. If you want to go and do the FG or the PR knot, it's all up to you if you want to learn it. This knot I usually use because I'm not targeting GTs or tuna or any huge fish. And a regular fish, not going to um, take out a, a double uni. That's just basically how, how it is. But basically, this is the main line and this is the leader. Straight down to the end leader, you have the hook. For the knocker, I usually use circle hooks, 4050, and I usually use like a one ounce egg sinker maximum. Now, for this setup, you tie the leader onto the main line, then you run the sinker up on the leader, and then you tie the hook. The sinker is allowed to knock the hook. Hence the reason the knock on, knock a rig. I usually use this setup in the shallows of the Gulf with like a bank in from a river bank. I have hardly ever used it down the islands, uh, mainly because of the current. Um, but again, you can always try it. Um, you can always use it like a semi floating down the islands with a, a light weight and a circle hook. So again, main line, double uni to the leader, straight down. We tread the sinker first and then tie the hook. Sinker is allowed to knock the hook. Hence, using knocker rig. So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about 
is I'm actually planning my first actual and real fishing trip. I mean, usually I travel for work and I try to fish in the morning or evening, but I don't actually get to do actually full-fledged fishing. So I'm actually planning my first trip. It's not too far away from Trinidad. It's actually to target monster wolfish, peacock bass, and other freshwater species. I really, I'm really excited to go on this trip, but I need your guys' help to get to go on that trip. Basically, all I need you guys to do is keep on watching the videos, liking the videos, but most importantly, sharing the videos. The more people you share it with, the more reach I get on YouTube. And maybe like one day eventually I'll be able to get monetized so you could help like fund these kind of fishing trips so I could bring the footage to you guys. The other way you could support the channel is I'm going to put a link right below the video. It's on my Amazon page. Basically, if you shop and buy anything on Amazon, I'll just ask you to go through this link and start shopping as normal. Now, even if it doesn't have to be a product on my page, but Amazon just gives me a small commission at no cost to you, no cost to the buyer, just for going through my channel link to go onto the Amazon page. So just click on the link and start shopping as normal like if you're on Amazon. Search for your product and you, you buy as, as normal. Again, you don't have to buy anything from my particular page. That's how you go through the link. Amazon gives me some small um, commission for, for that. So as usual, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video if you watch it to the end. I know it's not a normal fishing video where you see action. But every now and then I like to sit down and try to, you know, impart some knowledge onto the new fishing folks out there. Like I said, the channel is basically to encourage more people to fish. To encourage fishermen who are already fishing to try new things and get more into the outdoors, get fishing more. I mean, encourage more people to fish. Fishing is definitely a very enjoyable sport, a very enjoyable hobby. I can almost guarantee you if you get into it, you start catching fish, you're going to enjoy yourself. So thanks for watching, guys. Get into the outdoors. Keep fishing. Fish on.